In terms of the dual citizenship rule, from my standpoint, I think it shouldn't be a situation where the Prime Minister dictates what the Constitution should say. The Constitution allows, as I've said, mm -hmm. Commonwealth citizens to be in the Parliament. My father came to Jamaica in 1953 from the UK and he spent the rest of his career and died here. He's buried on Slipe Road. I never applied for British citizenship, you know. I've never signed any application form for it. I got a passport when I was a little child. My dad um, arranged that. And, you know, it, over the years, I've continued to have it. Um, but I don't use it now. I travel on Jamaican, my Jamaican. And in fact, I'm not intending to renew my UK passport. It expires this year. And I don't use it. I haven't been using it for a long time. But there are a number of people in Parliament who are Commonwealth citizens. I'm not the only one. Um, so, you know, I don't see why this is a big issue, but it's obviously being used as a way of trying to attack me personally. So you don't think there's any validation at all to the issue? I've never worked anywhere other than Jamaica. So my entire working life and my childhood um, were here. So, yeah, I'm a born Jamaican. Truth is, the constitution of the country from 1962 to now allows, in fact, requires Commonwealth citizenship to be eligible to be in our parliament. The UK and Jamaica are both part of the Commonwealth. So my presence in the parliament is in accordance with the constitution, is lawful. And I'm saying, and the PNP has been saying for decades, let's fully decolonize, stand up on our own two feet as a proud nation, because the PM has sworn allegiance to the king. In 2021, he joined the king's privy council voluntarily and, and would have had to swear an oath or affirm an oath of loyalty to the king. That was a couple of years before he suddenly came on the train about decolonization and becoming a republic. So he's a flip-flopper on this issue. Mark Golden cleared the air about him having dual citizenship. Um, is he a Jamaican citizen or not? Questions coming from uh, ruling government, the JLP, where the leader of the opposition uh, is here. Uh, Mark Golding joins us this morning to clear the air about this and so many other things. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, ladies. Mm -hmm. Pleasure uh, to be with you. Let me, let me hear how you are feeling in this moment, um, given what has happened within the last day. Yeah, well, this kind of firestorm that has arisen in the last two days, really, I see as a distraction from the issues that are confronting the country now, the issues relating to the constitutional reform process, which has been a process which many people feel has not been inclusive, has not been participatory, and has left a lot of people feeling frustrated and excluded. Plus, the cost of living issues facing Jamaicans, the crime rate, and the lack of hope in our people. So it's not surprising to me that our political competitors are seeking to generate distractions around these issues. Uh, and I think that's what this is. And him not only clear the air, him also make some very interesting points. Remember to like and subscribe. So yes, I'm a born Jamaican. I was born at University Hospital, 1965. I grew up in Jamaica. I went to school here, Mona Prep, Campion College. I studied abroad. And I came back right after, went to Norman Manley Law School and did two years there. Got a Commonwealth scholarship, did a master's degree in law in the UK, came back right after, and I've never worked anywhere other than Jamaica. So my entire working life and my childhood um, were here. So yeah, I'm a born Jamaican. I do have British citizenship as well, by descent. My father came to Jamaica in 1953 from the UK, and he spent the rest of his career and died here. He's buried on Slipe Road. So, you know, he was a person who gave a lot to this country. Started the Mona Rehab Center. He was in charge of the medical response to the polio epidemic of, in the 1950s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Kendall train crash, he was sent there to deal with the aftermath of that terrible incident and you know, establish a National Road Safety Council, Hope Valley Experimental School, all of these things. My mother was a career public servant. Um, she was one of the first three ladies, I believe, to join the civil service in Jamaica in an administrative position. And later on, after she got married and had children, she moved to the rehab center and spent the rest of her career there. So I'm very committed to Jamaica fully. You know, my entire life is about Jamaica. And so this whole thing is a bit peculiar. Truth is the constitution of the country 
from 1962 to now allows, in fact requires, Commonwealth citizenship to be eligible to be in our Parliament. The UK and Jamaica are both part of the Commonwealth. So my presence in the Parliament is in accordance with the Constitution, is lawful, and that's why I've never really thought of this as a big issue. I think, that, I think yeah. that's where the confusion mm -hmm. rests, um, mm -hmm. Mark Olin, because uh, we have heard people say, oh, but, 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 but the PNP has called for other people to denounce their citizenship. Right. Um, but, but, but you're saying the UK is a Commonwealth, but, right. but not the US. Correct. So the Commonwealth are nations who were f largely former colonies of the, U of the UK, but the US is not included in that. They have never been a member of the Commonwealth. Um, so there was an, an instance in 2007 when a number of candidates were, in fact, not eligible to be in Parliament because they had citizenship from countries that were not in the Commonwealth. And those matters were taken to court, and the court made they its rule. They were voted from Parliament. They had to come back in. They had to, by elections, by elections right? that were held, okay. correct? And some of them, I think they renounced their citizenship right. in order to be eligible. Right. Mm -hmm. And that happened. But there are a number of people in Parliament who are Commonwealth citizens. I'm not the only one. Um, so, you know, I don't see why this is a big issue, but it's obviously being used as a way of trying to attack me personally. So you don't think there's any validation at all to the issue? So is it therefore fair for you to categorize it as a mere distraction? One foot in and one foot out refers to the idea of leaving the but not leaving it. To categorize it as a mere distraction? One foot in and one foot out refers to the idea of leaving the monarchy, but not leaving it. In other words, Jamaica becoming a republic, but still having as one of our institutions of government at the highest level, uh, the Privy Council, which is the King's Court. When, the king, when, the, when you take a case to the Privy Council and the order is made by the court there, it's made in the King's name. And I'm saying, and the PNP has been saying for decades, let's fully decolonize, stand up on our own two feet as a proud nation and move forward together. So in terms of the dual citizenship rule, the constitution allows, as I've said, mm -hmm. Commonwealth citizens to be in the parliament. And uh, I've always regarded it as important to comply with the constitution and the laws of Jamaica. So we're going through a process of reform now. If this matter is debated um, and, and the Jamaican people feel strongly that the, the, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition, as two individuals, should not have dual citizenship, I would take the necessary steps to um, relinquish the, um, that status, you know. But as but it stands if, now... But if folks mm -hmm. ask you why wait until that time, because the, yeah. the, the, the notion that the, the PM raised yesterday is a matter of um, the, the ultimate executive leader not being perceived, well, not the Constitution says, but, you know, perception um, uh, being oftentimes the reality and the lens through which people view things, the, the, the perception of split loyalties, um, the, the per perception of having uh, two masters. The PM said, you know, we are a parachute if anything goes wrong. Um, you know, it needs to be clear that you have no other loyalty. Well, first of all, the PM is not really in a position to say that because the PM has sworn allegiance to the king. In 2021, he joined the king's privy council voluntarily and, and would have had to swear an oath or affirm an oath of loyalty to the king. That was a couple of years before he suddenly came on the train about decolonization and becoming a republic. So he's a flip-flopper on this issue. In my case, my life is one of service to the people of Jamaica. Um, certainly in the latter part of my life, before that I was in the private sector. But since 2007, when I became a senator, and more importantly since 2012, when I became part of the government as Minister of Justice and now as leader of the opposition, my life is one of service. And I think it's unequivocal that my commitment to Jamaica can, cannot be questioned. And indeed, this has never arisen in the past, you know, where we've had people in Parliament who've had dual citizenship because they're Commonwealth citizens, and the question of their loyalty to the country has never been questioned. So, from my standpoint, I think it shouldn't be a situation where the Prime Minister dictates what the Constitution should say. And he can't do that. And, uh, you know, it's a question of dialogue, consultation, and let us discuss the issue. And I, if whatever comes out of that process, I will abide by. If the con but as far as I'm concerned, it's part of who I am. You know, being my father's son is who I am. 
You know, Barack Obama was the son of a Kenyan. He didn't have to go through any procedure to renounce his Kenyanship. You know, I, he became the president of the United States. Similarly, I'm born here. I grew here. Yes, I have this status by virtue of who my father was. But why should I be required when the law doesn't and the Constitution doesn't require it to change my status? Nobody else has ever been asked to do that. Do you have a Jamaican passport, Margolin? And when you travel to the UK, do you use your UK citizenship or do you go and get a visa like the rest of us? I travel on a Jamaican passport whenever I travel nowadays. Since I came into government in 2012, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I decided I was not going to use the UK passport and uh, I've maintained that. I have a diplomatic passport as a minister and, and, I get, and then as a leader of the opposition I got one again. I have a UK visa in my Jamaican diplomatic passport. I was in the UK in, two years ago for a tour. I went up on that visa. I had to apply for it. I had to go to the office here and go through all the biometrics like everybody else and what have you. So I have a US visa in my Jamaican passport. I have a tenure visa as well mm -hmm. and in my diplomatic passport. So I travel on Jamaican, my Jamaican. And in fact, I'm not intending to renew my UK passport. It expires this year and I don't use it. I haven't been using it for a long time. And you know, I, I have no need for it and I plan to, to, to give it up. So that's where I stand on that issue. It's hard to speak in hypotheticals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, it's hard to speak in hypotheticals, but were the shoe on the other foot? Mm -hmm. If this were the prime minister who, who was in this situation, um, how do you think you would view it? I don't know. I, I'm not in that. Yeah, I don't want to speculate on that. But would you be but able I to just, understand the concerns? I, my, I believe in the rule of law. Yeah. And, you know, I think that it's unreasonable to expect people to um, do things uh, that are contrary to their legal rights. Now, this is something I'm going to pray on and, you know, I'm going to continue to reflect on. But, you know, from my standpoint, it's, I, I feel it's an imposition by him to be demanding that I do something which the Constitution doesn't require and which there's been no public debate about. I get a lot of people telling me, don't give it up. A lot of members of the public saying, you know, don't um, succumb to this kind of pressure, which is politically motivated. It's a, it's a, your status is in accordance with the Constitution. Your father was a person who my father got the Order of Jamaica. It's the highest honor that a, a non-Jamaican can get. You know, he was loved in this country and he served this country well. And I feel proud of him and the heritage I got from him is part of who I am. So, you know, it's a big deal for me to be told that notwithstanding that the law says and the Constitution says my status is legitimate and fine, I must give up who, part, that part lots of... Lots are telling you do, lots are telling you don't. You know, other people are telling you, but, but if it's... You too? Hmm? Others advising you to give it up? Some, well, I would say a few people, like people in the papers and so on, you know, the commentators and what have you. Have said. And I said, I'm going to continue because it's to me, you know, the passport is really the only issue. Um, I never applied for British citizenship, you know. I've never signed any application form for it. I got a passport when I was a little child. My dad um, arranged that. And, you know, it, over the years, I've continued to have it. Um, but I don't use it now. And for me, it was a travel document that was convenient. I'm quite willing to give it up because I haven't been using it, as I've said, for many years now. Um, and this whole question of renouncing, you know, that, that, that status is something I've never considered before. And I'm going to think about it. But my initial position on it is I think it's an unreasonable um, request, given the current constitution that we have. But, you know, I, I, it's something that I'm prepared to consider um, going forward. And whatever, certainly, if, the, if, the, if we go through the constitutional reform process and the people of Jamaica decide, it's an ironic in a way because I was the one advocated that we should expand who can be in parliament to not just commonwealth citizens, but all Jamaican citizens, regardless, including US, um, pe people of dual US nationality or other countries. Um, and that's what kind of triggered some of this com current, current furor. But now the Prime Minister is saying he agrees with that. He agrees that dual citizens should be allowed, but not me. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, yeah, that's a really strange formulation. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's the way, ultimately, the, constitu the new constitution that we have, if that's what it says, I you will comply. The of course. That's gonna take yeah. you, you've been very clear on your position. I want to yeah. thank you for coming in this morning thank you. and clarifying that for I us. Leader of the opposition, President of the People's National Party, Mark Golding. That's right. 
Thank All you right, for having me, ladies. Up. We're gonna sit and. I remember. Don't believe what I'm saying in this video. This video is all for entertainment purposes.